following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of CATV2, Oshkosh Community Media Services, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Hi everyone, welcome to Ayan Oshkosh, Cheryl Hentz along with uh, Dan Rylance and uh, we're very pleased to welcome the uh, Republican candidate for the 18th Senate seat, uh, Randy Hopper. Um, about a month or so ago we had on his uh, Democratic opponent, Jess King, and um, you know Randy was supposed to be on a few weeks back. We had some scheduling issues, uh, but uh, we're very pleased that he's here tonight. So welcome. Thanks thank so you. Much. Thank you for uh, the scheduling. Uh, <laughs> Not a problem. Earlier. We understand things come up. So, um, we always start with political candidates, Randy, by just having them tell us a little bit about themselves and, and why you're getting into, you know, politics. Well, it, it, um, a lot of people on the campaign, tour, that's the number one question, mm -hmm. Randy, what are you thinking? <laughs> um, are you nuts? Are, are you, are you nuts? And, and, and there are days <coughs> when I, I can honestly agree with them uh -huh. that you are nuts. But, but to understand me, you have to understand that I've always followed passions in my life. Uh, you know, my first passion is, is my wife. I've been married for... Uh, uh, 11, going on 12 years, uh, and uh, so my family and my wife are a passion mm -hmm. of mine. Um, my children um, are a passion mm -hmm. of mine. Uh, my business is a passion. Uh, for the last 17 years, I've had the, the privilege of owning uh, KFIZ radio station, which is um, a heritage radio station in, in Wisconsin, and WFON, and then a couple other uh, other radio stations. And, uh, and uh, the passion of what small market radio can do, the involvement that you have in the community. And the community is something that, that uh, we've always strived at the radio stations. And so I have a passion. I've been very involved uh, for the last 17 years. Uh, you know, it, on, the, on the Board of Trustees of Marion University and, and uh, uh, Cops for Kids Foundation mm -hmm. uh, uh, founding member. Um, I, I was the president of Final Act Festivals and the American Heart Association Heart Walk uh, chairman. I'm, I currently sit on the, the Final Act Chamber of Commerce Board uh, the YMCA board, and so the radio stations, and um, and 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 me, and personally, we've always been very active in the community. Um, my parents taught me that very early on. They they always said, you know, get involved. Uh, politics was always something that we talked about in my family. Uh, it was something that uh, you know, election night, my father and I are on the phone. I have been since I was 18. Uh, my grandfather ran for U.S. Congress. Uh, in central Illinois um, in the 60s was unsuccessful, but politics were always something. So if you put sort of the passion for my family uh, and the passion for my business and the passion for my community together, uh, this election is critical. I believe that, that we have a, a cro there are, are there, the states at a crossroads. Mm -hmm. We can either continue down a path that I see as, is detrimental to my business, it's detrimental to my family, um, because it, it, my family is provided for by through the business. And, and so um, uh, when Carol Ressler decided to retire, um, uh, I got a lot of phone calls. And people said, Randy, you know what? You'd be a great candidate. Would you consider this? And so, you know, sitting down with my wife and, and the family, because really the commitment that you make, I feel very sorry for spouses of candidates. I couldn't imagine what they go through on the presidential for two years mm. of doing this. Um, we started this campaign with about 104 days to go into the campaign. We're 33 uh, days um, to go. Mm -hmm. I, I can I can tell you the <laughs> hours. <laughs> I can I can tell you the hours. Yeah. But but it is. But you, you're always away from your family sure. and your family sacrifices. And so um, that's something that that was important to me. I love coaching my son's Y football team. Uh, he plays flag football and, and I'm, I'm involved. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a small business owner so I have the ability to um, 
be at my at my my children's events, mm -hmm. and that's an important factor for me. You know, you can always you know I'm always a, I'm a sort of a results oriented person. You, you get the job done, mm -hmm. but if you can go do that, and and the people in our company have always had that. Your family should be first, um, and then the job. By the way, you have to get the job done, but the right. job should be second. So, so because it's because there's a crossroads, and I think somewhere down the down the line, uh, Madison got broken. Um, it, things don't work the way um, common sense people would would think that they would work. And, and I've learned this in seventy days of, uh, <laughs> of, of 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 being around it all the mm -hmm. time. That if you make too much sense, they don't get it. Um, if but it's but too easy, they if don't it's, get if it. If they don't get it, and, and I think what we need, um, uh, certainly in in Madison, certainly in Madison right now, Madison, is we need a common sense approach, and we need people going to Madison that don't need to be in Madison. We need people that have made their careers or have a career in the private sector, and then they volunteer to go serve in the public sector mm -hmm. with the intent of going back to the private sector. Okay. Um, uh, and so, so I, 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 you know, I've, I've told people all along through this process, uh, I'm not a career politician. I'm not going to be a career politician. I have one. I love the radio stations and I love working with small businesses uh, in our community. I also um, uh, own and, and, and with a couple of partners a record label and we manage five bands. Uh, and so, you know, last year for work, we were, we have a band from Oshkosh, a band by the name of Kilroy. They actually opened the final water fest for Alice Cooper. But these are guys that had never played live before and won a contest on our FM radio station uh, to play Walleye Weekend. And afterwards they said, would, would I consider managing them? Well, that particular New Year's, and I'll just tell this story quickly so we get on to, to the other thing. That New Year's they played at uh, Deb's Golf Shack, you know, on 41 mm -hmm. with the dinosaurs and the putt-putt. Mm -hmm. The following New Year's, these four uh, young guys from Oshkosh played at the Fiesta Bowl. Mm -hmm. This last year they played at the, um, they'd be a great, by the way, they played at the NASCAR championships, mm -hmm. they played at the Super Bowl, um, they're touring all over the country, and, mm -hmm. and, and so I, I love that. But that's another, you know, follow your passion, mm -hmm. and music is, is another one of those passions. I have full intent of going back to music and going back to um, the radio stations and certainly spending more time with my family um, and so that we don't have those sacrifices. And I think that perspective is important. Um, and I think that's a perspective that I, I'm, ho I'm hoping that, that is um, contagious in that I've heard horror stories of candidates who are sworn in to office who the very next day start their reelection campaign. So, so you know, truly, what are, they, what are they trying to accomplish other than I better say this if I want to get reelected or if I don't do this, I'm not going to get reelected or the money isn't going to be there. And, and that's the wrong approach. They're so interested in keeping the job that they don't do the job anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I think that fresh perspective that I hope to bring to this is something that, that is intriguing to me uh, and, and hopes that, that I will be able to, to help fix that that okay. part of the system. All right. I should just disclose um, that it doesn't mean I'm going to go any easier on him, <laughs> but uh, about 14, 13, 14 years ago, I, I did work uh, for one of Randy's radio stations, and um, so I'll just put that right out there. But like I said, not going to go any easier on you just because of that. Um, I want to get to a couple of the tough questions here, and let's just get them out of the way. Okay. Um, a few months ago, you stated in an interview with Wisconsin Eye that while meeting with Representative John Townsend in Madison, the mm -hmm. two of you, quote, went back to his office and shut the door, and this was in the Capitol, sure. um, so we could talk about what I needed to do in the campaign. Now, that, of course, led to a complaint being filed with the Government Accountability Board by Final Lac County uh, Democratic Party Chair Rich Mance. In filing that complaint, this is what Mance said um, afterwards. He said, after the caucus scandals of recent years, it is well known that it is unethical to campaign on the state's dime and with the state's resources. Um, and then he also said, candidate Hopper's actions show that he either doesn't understand the law or that he doesn't care. 
Either way, the voters of the 18th district deserve better from their candidates. Now, your campaign responded by accusing um, opponent Jess King of, you know, have, having a part in this. Um, I think the word smear merchants uh, was used. Uh, what proof did you have that she was, because she was on the show and, and she sure. said she had no involvement. Uh, did you guys have some proof that she was a participant or played some kind of a role uh, in this? Th th let, me, let me explain. Uh, the way these campaign, the way the campaigns work, whether it's the, the party chairs in, in Fond du Lac or in Winnebago County, the candidate is the final say. Mm -hmm. The candidate can say, we don't want to go there. We don't want to do that direction and mm -hmm. should have the final say because we're the ones that are actually out there. Uh, two days prior to this particular event, I was at a, at a retired educators meeting in Fond du Lac. It's the first time my opponent and I were together. And I stood up in that meeting and said, you know, I'm really looking forward to raising the the discourse of, of the political. There's two of us. We make the final decision. Uh, together we can say, you know, for the next 104 days, let's talk about what your plan is, lay it out. I'll lay out what my plan is, and then let the voters decide. Mm -hmm. But get out of this, this, this personal attacks and things that don't have relevance into the campaign. And it was two days later that, that, that um, uh, this um, was, was uh, sent out. There's nothing in my campaign that doesn't go out that I don't see and either say, yes, it goes out or it doesn't go out. At this level, that's the way it ought to be. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that's the same on, on both sides. Um, that particular um, uh, event that you're referring to, because uh, I'd, like I'd like to address that. because Absolutely, Because, sure. um, uh, and I don't remember, that, I think Mr. Mann or... Um, Mance. Uh, Mance, yeah. yes. Um, talked about how that was influencing whether I decided to run for the hmm. Senate seat. We're talking about a constituent meeting with his representative years ago, years ago, when um, there was uh, uh, some, some people that were trying to recruit me to consider running for an assembly seat. Uh, there was nothing illegal that, that took place whatsoever. Um, and, uh, and I do care, and I do understand the rules, and I'm very careful to abide by them. I've lived my life um, com you know, very ethically, uh, and so I was. I was upset about that, and 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 I don't remember smear merchants ever being something. It's something that I never would have would have said. I think at the time we said it's it's too bad that they decided to go negative, uh, that we didn't need to do that. Especially, I think it was in a press release. Uh, yeah, it, it was in a press release, but yeah. it wasn't smear merchant. But it was it was something. I think, I think it was, was it? actually. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think it was. That was it was seventy days ago. So <laughs> but, uh, that's okay. But that's no, all right. Um, uh, I, I just think it's really important um, that, you know, in the, if you look at what our campaign is doing throughout the course of this, this entire cycle, we're saying, here's what Randy Hopper's about. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, and, and, and regardless of what organization I'm talking to, mm -hmm. I'm forward and I say, here, is, here, is, here are what my plans are and here's what I stand for. Uh, and it doesn't change with, with, any, sure. with any organization. Um, I, it, it, it's just the right way to, to go about doing things, and I don't think campaigns need to get into the personal uh, attacks. Are we going to point out um, votes or um, uh, records that my opponents done? A absolutely. Sure. But we're not going to talk good. about we're not going to we're not going to talk about um, carpet bagging and, and you know some of the things that that that, um, that my opponent's um, team has has engaged in. Uh, we don't we don't believe in that sort of thing. I, I you know I think it's, we kind of sit back and, and chuckle because they they say you know Randy Hopper's not from here. Well, when you and I worked together, my hair was a lot darker, and uh, you know, s 17 years. As I've lived now in in, in Fond du Lac and called Fond du Lac um, my home longer than I've called any other location my home. My both of my children were born there. You know, it, much to my mother's um, dismay, she always says, "Randy, you got to come home," and I always say. Mom, I am home. I will visit where I was born. <laughs> um, but that, and, I, and I think that's a, a very important factor. Okay. All right. What is the status, just out of curiosity, of that investigation, if you will, of the complaint? Uh, the, the, the last I heard it was completely dropped. Okay. Um, right. uh, I, I can tell you this, too. Um, the Capitol Press contacted us um, because they were tipped to ask to, to contact us. Uh, I spoke with an AP reporter in Madison who, um, prior to, the, to this being filed, um, laughed 
at, at this non-event and said, um, but I have to follow up because I'm, I'm told to. Um, so the, the you know, sort of a little big hoopla was made about it and then uh, we haven't heard a lot about it. And the last I heard, I believe it, it was completely dropped. Okay, go ahead, Dan. In your opening remarks, you sort of painted a picture of running against a class of professional politicians. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe state employees or people didn't have jobs who were going to start running for re-election the day after they get elected. Those don't apply to your opponent, Jess King, do they? Uh, uh, no, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not referring to her. I'm, I'm talking about... But you are running against her. I am running against her, but I'm talking about... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm running also against the current <laughs> state of, of, of politics in Madison. Uh, my opponent has, uh, you know, she, she's, she's been on the city council for a little over two years. So she's not, you know, the term of a city council is three years. Right. So she... Uh, it's two here. Two year, it's yeah. two, two years yeah. here. But, but so, sh so she's, you know, right. making that next step. I'm not, I'm not referring to her. I'm, I, I can tell you about me. I'm not a career right. politician. Uh, I'm but a, she's not either. I'm, a, a, I'm not talking about her. But you're running against her. That's fine. That's, that's fine. I, I, I'm also... I, I, I'm just... If, if you watch what I'm doing, I'm, I'm describing who I am. I understand uh, that. And, and I'm going to tell you what my points are. Okay. And she needs to say what her point is. She can say, guess what? I'm not a career politician either. Okay. Um, and, and I think that uh, that's, a, that's a key fact that you need. You didn't say me say, my opponent is the career politician. Because I don't think she's a career politician. Okay. And I don't need to talk about that. Okay. What I need to talk about is, here's who Randy Hopper is. Because the voters are going to make a determination. Do I want this candidate or that candidate. Yeah. And so I'm not going to take time to sell my part. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you about what I can bring to the table and let them decide. Okay, why are you running as a Republican? Um, I believe in the, in the core of what the Republican Party okay. believes in, and that is I believe in less government. Okay. I, believe, um, I believe in less taxation. I, I, I'm not a, 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 you know, I believe in... in uh, Less taxation. I believe in less regulation. I believe in less litigation, which is you know kind of a quick little okay. synopsis. Um, the Democratic Party, and certainly in the state, has a has a history of of big government and big spending. I don't think that's very efficient or effective. Uh, I don't think when you're when you're staring down at a 1.2 billion dollar okay. deficit is the time you start adding new programs on. Um, so fundamentally, I don't believe in that form of, uh, okay. of economics. I, uh, you know, I like this. If, if I can't afford my mortgage and I can't afford my property taxes, I ought to not think about doing an addition on my house. And uh, s people on the opposite, uh, and by the way, this is not every issue, but fundamental economic issues, um, big government versus, versus limited government, I support limited government. Um. John McCain, when he gave his acceptance speech at St. Paul, never mentioned George Bush or the Republican Party in his acceptance speech. I don't see anything on your signs that says you're a Republican. Are, are Republicans embarrassed this year to run as Republicans? No. And, and, and by, if, you, if you look at, at, um, at any candidate sign, um, pull up one of my opponent's signs. It doesn't say she's a Democrat um, on, any of, on any of the literature. Um, but when I'm knocking on doors, um, I'm, I'm proud to say I'm the Republican candidate okay. running for the 18th okay. Senate seat. Um, my opponent's not quite, uh, you know, I, I will say it when, they, uh, when asked by a, a person in final, like, what party are you with? She said it doesn't matter. Well, it, to me it does matter. Uh, and I'm proud to say I'm a Republican. Okay. Um, and if you look at my ideals and, and my ideas, uh, it's Pretty, you can draw a conclusion okay. pretty quickly uh, what I am. So uh, I'm not ashamed that I'm a Republican. Um, I believe in, in the principles of, of being a Republican. And so um, yeah, I think you should be proud about what party you're, you're with. But, but that doesn't mean that you just support Republican only ideas. You need to, our job, if, if I'm fortunate enough to get this, is to go serve the needs of the 18th okay. district. Uh, what is the most efficient and effective way that we as a state government can operate. And that means you have to decide what are the best ideas. Uh, and you can't say, well, I just have to focus on these ideas. The fundamental principles, and here, here this, is a, this is a pretty good example. The fundamental principles, are, uh, or what, what define me as a person, um, uh, are more in tune with the, the Republican Party. My, uh, you're not gonna change, my, ideal, my ideas, my ideals, excuse me, what, what make me up, you're not going to change those by going to Madison. But I think you have to have an approach where you say, um, what are the things that we can work together on? Um, 
knowing that my, the fundamental ideals of what I am, you're not gonna change those uh, in me. Um, and so um, uh, that's missing a little bit too. In, in, in the, the partisanness of, of Madison or the partisanness of, of Washington, and by the way, it's amazing. You, you know, the second day um, I was at, in Amro um, after just announcing, we were doing a, a, a parade in Amro, and someone came up to me and said, I hate you. I could see it in there. They said, I hate you. And I said, wow, it usually takes people a week, you know, <laughs> before they uh, really hate me. But this person, I could see in their eyes, they said they hate me. And I, at that point, what I had said was, um, I had said I am for lowering taxes or holding the line on taxes, and I'm for creating family supporting jobs in the district. But because I was a Republican, they hated me. Well, what's that saying about the way the system is right now? Um, are we supposed to all work together after, after those kind of uh, attacks? It doesn't make sense to me. And, and, I, and I've said this, um, there are, one of the things I've done throughout the course of this entire process is I've gone and I've talked to people that I know aren't going to support me. They're going to support my opponent. But after, you know, either locally or, or uh, other places, after the election is over, if I'm fortunate enough to win, we're going to have to work together. So what happens in the campaign has got to stay in the campaign. Uh, it's, it's a hard thing, by the way, when you're, when you're watching Monday Night Football and you see a, you know, personal attack ad come out see, about you. Talking about that, in the middle yes. of the Brewers-Phillies game, yeah. They were running a, 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 a. Are you familiar with this? <laughs> of course I am. All right. Well, you're, they're accusing you, and I don't know who they are. It, it's some group that I've never heard of. That you're not, you're you're not defaulting, but you're behind on paying. I, I, I assume I, your state income tax. Yeah, right? it, 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 they they uh, set it on a property. I can tell you this. Well, I paid all my property taxes. Okay. I have no delinquent taxes. Okay. You know what, because I thought maybe this year would have been a good year to do that since <laughs> I was going to run for office. Maybe no one will pay attention to it. Let's, let's get real about it. I mean, who, who is the group? Uh, I, I'm not sure who they are. I know that they're funded. Um, uh, they're, they're, they're funded through organizations um, that um, are getting, here's the way the system works. Senate Democrats are in control of the state Senate. Right. And, and certain people in the leadership will say, by the way, group, you're going to put money into this group. Sure. If you want to do business in the next two years, this is, the, you know, if you want to talk about problems in the system. And so these groups put money into a fund, and then that fund is used throughout the state mm -hmm. to assist. It happens, by the way, on both sides. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not yeah. naive about that, but that's, that's what this Where's particular, the they're, 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 and, and by the way, in today's, in the, in, people are tired of this. I mean, th that's why I said to, to uh, my opponent before, let's not go that route. Let's, let's go the route of saying, here are my ideas, and here are your ideas. And by the way, they're very different. We have different well, approaches to it. Can, we get, can we, we get to some of them? Do you want to go ahead? Or you can't? Sure. No, go ahead. No. Go ahead. One of the things you proposed uh, is repealing, as I understand it, the state's personal property tax. Is that correct? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. What's the fiscal impact of that? A on the state and the three counties that you would represent. Okay. How much money are we talking here? I, I, I don't have the, the specific figures, but let me tell you why. Okay. Okay. What this this mainly revolves around startups for um, like a restaurant business. This is what it, it all came to light because of restaurant businesses. Okay. What happens is when I'm, I'm trying to create these family supporting jobs, and what happened is when a restaurant is trying to get on its feet, we have a young, uh, you know, not young or an old person that says, you know, I want to go into business for myself, or the American dream, I want to be my own boss, mm -hmm. and they want to start a restaurant. Um, they're taxed on all the equipment to start their restaurant. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're actually discouraging someone to okay. go out there and do it. And so what, I, so what I'm saying is, that's the wrong time to do it. I, I am of the, my opinion is, the way we help our economy is through less government intervention and uh, and we ought to be we ought to be supporting people that want to create Wisconsin jobs right now through um, through s some of our um, you know uh, additional r regulations we discourage that I've talked to, you know, I have, in the radio business I have thousands of small business clients mm -hmm. that we help every day and and they tell me you know what. Um, Business is going great, but now I just popped over 50 employees, and so now I have to do, on a federal side, FMLA uh, regulations about sick leave and, 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 and these type of things. And what's happened to them is uh, there's one business in particular in Finland. They ended up selling one of the units of their operation, and it was a, it was a 
it was a great part of their business, but they couldn't jump through the hoops because these small businesses don't have the infrastructure to, to, to fulfill all those regulations. Is that what we ought to be doing? Or should we actually be saying, you know what, let's grow jobs in our market? Because what happens when we do this? And, and I learned this early on. Creating a job is creating economic life. Um, so not only are you helping, um, helping support the property taxes, there's more people coming into our markets to pay property taxes, but you're, you're putting kids into schools. Uh, you know, some of the schools in our district mm -hmm. are really struggling um, with enrollments. And, 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 and a lot of their issues can be solved. You create five new jobs, maybe that's 10 new kids coming into the schools. And so I think, um, I think it, when we're talking about that, I think that's what it, it's a job killer. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the things you'll hear me talking about on different issues that, that you'll bring up, um, as a small business owner, I understand uh, ways to encourage growth mm -hmm. and ways to discourage, and that's a big discourager. Okay. Um, you, you brought up about the Family uh, Leave Act. Um, you know, I, I appreciate what you're saying, Randy, as far as, you know, it, it killed this business in the sense that it had to sell off one of its units or shut down one of its units. Um, but yet, by the same token, you're a family man. Um, mm -hmm. Your family is your passion. You've made that point yep. abundantly clear. Should not American workers have the ability, um, through their employer if need be, to spend more time with their family after they've had a child or they've got someone who's been stricken with cancer and they need to spend time with them in their final days. Is that not important? No, uh, no I, think it's, I think it's critically important. Mm -hmm. But now you're, you're talking to someone who, um, I, I walk that walk. Mm -hmm. And in, 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 in if you recall in, in our company, um, I'm a results person. I think that that is something that, that can happen between an employer and an employee and not be something that is mandated to an employer. I bet it can't. <laughs> well, well, it is. It, I don't, I don't, I, well, I'm well, sorry, well, I, I cannot what? imagine <laughs> that an employer would voluntarily mm -hmm. well, uh, put I do, that out there. I do. Call, call, call anybody who works for me and I will tell you that the exception well you know what you well, really but, but you know what but but that's this is what you're getting you're getting the exception okay. running for this office because okay. it, I, I say from the very start if your family is not more important than the job then your priorities are completely out of whack but now here's yeah. something else that I that I do require is I require the end result to be there mm -hmm. so so here's the trade-off um, you want to go um, to your, your and you should want to go to your son's or daughter's soccer game or to their birthday party at school well then that means that you don't go to the movie on saturday and you're in here and that's the agreement that that i have with with the people with our team members that work for me and i do job share and you know one of the things that that we did in our company is i went and found an unbelievably untapped workforce in sheboygan of professional um, stay-at-home mothers uh, who didn't have an employer that was willing to let them work five or ten hours a week mm -hmm. but i'll tell you what the productivity that I got out of five or ten hours a week from from uh, from some of these team members was worth it beneficially to, to our company, mm -hmm. and so you have to weigh that as well. Sure. But uh, I would say actually, uh, you know, th there are other companies that do it that I know uh, of that do it. And, but I think it's I, I think we have to be careful about about mandating mm -hmm. certain certain things. Are there companies that abuse? That system? Sure. sure, there are. Well, there's also a distinction, though. I think we, we have to be honest about that. I, there's a distinction between, you know, a, a day here and a day there, and you know, six weeks af baby. after you've had a child, or you know, a couple of months, or whatever it is, if you've got a dying parent or a dying, you know, any kind of relative, really, from from that standpoint. Um, God, we're running out of time, and there's so many things. Um, I heard one thing on the way over here tonight. And I had to scratch it out in longhand. Um, if elected, your radio ad said you wouldn't vote for any tax increase that would hurt hardworking families. I think that's what it said. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have pen and paper with me. But um, what tax would, would not hurt families, for example? And secondly, is that not somewhat of an irresponsible statement to make, Randy, when you don't know, A, um, what the tax increase might be for, mm -hmm. and B, you don't know how that increase might be packaged as part of a, a greater sure. piece of legislation. Sure. Well, let, uh, let, fundamentally, let me just tell you sure. what I believe. I don't think we have a tax issue in the state of Wisconsin. We have got a spending issue in the state of Wisconsin. I, I agree and with so, that. And so, <laughs> and so, and I, I use the analogy of the house and the addition. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, we're, we're going to be staring down at a $1.7 billion deficit uh, this particular year. That's Revenue, why I don't know how you can decrease property taxes. Well, well the, the, the decrease in property taxes is a way to help grow the economy. It, 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 but how are you going to do with the deficit? What are you going to do with the deficit? Well, you have to cut spending. What See, are you going to you cut? Know, uh, well, uh, I can tell you a couple of things. I can uh, state aid to illegal uh, immigrants right away. The first thing. How I'm, much is that? Uh, th it, it's significant. It's significant. Eighty percent of the budget is oh. higher education, public education, well, prisons, and Medicare. Okay, well, so well, you're you're going to get a dribble out of that okay. faucet for. Okay, here's here's a, here's an important fact. <laughs> Um, a journey of a million miles starts with a step, and, and, and I think that that's an important distinction. So are we going to say, you know what, let's not start cutting things because it's a small amount. We have got to look at everything we spend okay. on, every little bit. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one, one, one item that is, a, that is a drop in the bucket, but it's appalling to me. Do you know as state legislators, I get um, deferred sick leave. You talked about uh, right. sick leave. Mm -hmm. I, get, I get compounded deferred sick okay. leave as a state legislator, and guess what? I never punch a clock. Right. I never take a and sick you day. You probably never claim a sick day. And you either. never, no, but that's it. <laughs> you never claim a sick day. That's right. And the amount of money, because guess what? We're funding that, and that's appalling yep. to me. Yep. And so someone asked me, what are you going to do the first day? And I said, the first day I'm going to, you know, try to find, if, if again, <laughs> find if I'm, I'm going to find the office, and I'm certainly going to look to find the closest restroom. Yeah. But other than that, I, Immediately, we'll say that that is an abuse of the system. Good for but you, by the way, but it's every, uh, it's every, every. We have to look at everything. I would immediately stop unfunded mandates, go into the municipalities, and then I would look at at the one, the ones that we have on the books now. And then what we need to do is create a communication gap between the local communities and the state. Somewhere along the line, we stop talking to each other. And and I've talked with with you know Alan Beekle in in Fond du Lac County, and he said, you know what? There are more efficient and effective ways for us to um, to operate, but we can't because we have to jump through all these state mandated hoops. I could save money, so so we have to look at, at how we can pool our resources. But but don't for for anything. Don't say that's just a drop because all the drops are going to add up, and we got to clean up the whole system. Do I think we need? Uh, boy, I, I wish we had a lot of time. I can't wait to to put my arms around uh, the education system, <laughs> and, and 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 but it's but it's it's you've got to you've got to get people that are willing to talk about it. What would you pull off of the education? Thing? What would what I pull you, off it? Yeah. Here, 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 I'll give you a, a quick synopsis okay. of what my approach would be. My approach would be this: um, What do we want our our twelfth grade educated students? To possess what knowledge and skill set do we want them to have okay. when they graduate? Okay? okay, and then and that's that's um, pulled together by the heaviest part, the education community, but also the business community in town, uh, in in our areas, um, and and to a certain extent, legislators. But we <coughs> legislators don't do a lot really well, so um, we, we take them out of the picture. So then, so then <coughs> backstep it. So when they graduate from the twelfth grade, here's what we want to learn. So that means in the eleventh, we want them to learn this, and tenth and then back it up. And then what we need to do is say, okay, what's the criteria, what do we need to do? What's the curriculum that's gonna get us to the end result, mm -hmm. okay? And, th and that, by the way, is the education department saying, how do we do it, because, and then, then we gotta measure it as we go. And we're not talking about no child left behind standardized tests. Are there certain tests that we have to, d have, to have? Absolutely, because guess what? When they graduate from, the, from 12th grade, it's too late to not look forward on it. Well, I know one area, or one way that some of that money from the personal property tax can be kind of recouped, and that is closing the loopholes on businesses mm -hmm. who are maybe their home office is located somewhere else, but they're doing business in Wisconsin, not paying corporate income tax right. in the state. Right. What's your, I know you've said you'd, you'd want less government involvement in, in business in particular, but, you know, how do you feel about th that? Th th this, is, this is certainly a, a topic that is, um, um, I hear a lot from, from, uh, from other people on the mm -hmm. campaign trail. Um, we're talking about, you're talking about a job killer. You, you're talking about, uh, first off, uh, as, we, as you said, close the loophole. So what, the first thing we can say is what's going on is completely legal. 
um, it's it's their accounting principles are legal within the system. They're legal, and we don't well, know. They may be legal, we, but, but they're but, not right. But, but, okay, but, here, but here's they're the thing. Right. But here's the thing. But here's they're the not killing jobs. Those companies. You look at McDonald's. McDonald's has not gone out of business in any other state, and and they sure as hell wouldn't go out of business in Wisconsin. You, you, it's not killing jobs. You, you don't know their accounting. You don't. You don't know. You don't know McDonald's, and I don't either. They're you doing don't know business McDonald's. in the state of Wisconsin the, and not paying corporate but, income tax here, 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 and that's not right. Okay, well, Walmart is one of the ones that, that people talk about. So. You know, if we're ready to get on the bus and drive around the state of Wisconsin and we walk into Walmart and you pick the 12 people that go, because here's the perception that, that, that is getting missed. You pick the 12 people that are losing their jobs. Walmart is not going, Walmart is, is making X amount in, in the state of Wisconsin, okay? So this is their, their profit center. We know Walmart makes a lot of profit. We, we all know that. Um, Walmart, you're going to say, okay, Walmart, you have this additional tax in the state of Wisconsin. We created some of these tax, uh, some tax shelters to encourage job growth in our state. So what's going to happen is, and this is where this is the, this is the simple thing. What they're going to say is, guess what? I still have to make those numbers, especially you know anybody who's publicly traded. I still have to make those numbers. So now that I'm, I'm I have this additional expense um, I, uh, of the tax, I got I got to look for it on uh, on the expense side. And they're going to say, what's my number one expense? And they're going to say it's people. And what's going to happen is people will lose their jobs. That's the, that's the direct cause okay. of what will happen. On that, we're going to have to agree to disagree. Okay. <laughs> and i got to wrap it up. But uh, thanks much for being here. Yeah. Thank uh, you all thanks very for much. Coming. Good luck Appreciate to you it. on uh, Tuesday, November 4th. We're going to take a very short break. When we come back, we'll be joined by uh, Chuck Williams and Tina Haifman, uh, just kind of reviewing what's been happening with the uh, first summer of the uh, Otter Street Fishing Club's fishing pier down on Menominee Drive. We'll be right back. We just escaped. I escaped. I escaped. By foot. Run across the border. I couldn't practice my religion. I was put to work in the forced labor camps. If I stay in Cambodia, I would have been dead by now. If you think differently, then you're an enemy. If you know how to read and write, you're dead. You speak your mind, you're dead. The only way to express what I wanted to do was to get out. I got to the country when I was about 14 years old. I was 20. I was 24. I came here with nothing. No money, no English. America stood for freedom, it stands for freedom, and that's why all my generation, young generation, wanted to be there. For the first time, I felt like I have a right to be on this earth. Here, you can do whatever you want to do. I love my life here. I feel at home. I'm free to do what I want. Freedom to me means my life. <laughs> How you doing? Hi. Hi. Have a nice day. You too. Thanks. If only child abuse were this easy to recognize. If you even suspect abuse, call 1-800-4-A-CHILD. All calls are anonymous and confidential. Trust your instincts. Poor nutrition today will increase Sarah's chances of anemia, add to her health care costs, sick days, even stunt her ability to learn. And the thing is, Sarah's not even born yet. Get proper nutrition before it's too late. Call or visit WIC. WIC provides nutrition information, health care referrals, even food. Your child has you, and you have WIC. All right, welcome back to the second half of Ayan Oshkosh. Uh, as I mentioned before the break, uh, we're uh, joined now by uh, Chuck Williams, a local attorney, and uh, Tina Haifman. Uh, Haifman, is it Haifman? Or? Haifman. Okay, Haifman. I had it right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> um, who is uh, a neighbor um, in the area, basically, of the uh, Otter Street Fishing Club's fishing pier. And this idea uh, to do this show actually came to us from a, a viewer who said, hey, you know, now that the first summer of the uh, fishing pier has kind of gone by, um, you know, it might be nice to just kind of hear how things went uh, during the summer and so um, I got a hold of Chuck and he got a hold of Tina and here we all are assembled this evening. They didn't bring any fishing poles. No, they, <laughs> they did not. <laughs> Nor any fish. <laughs> so I don't know Sorry. what that means. But So, um, you know, you were a huge opponent of this going in, Chuck, and Tina, I'm yeah, assuming well. you probably were too? Yes. Okay. Um, the first summer's been completed and how did things go? Well I think it 
you know, it went uh, well, and uh, I think the, a lot of people think it's uh, less of an obstruction uh, to the view than they thought it would be. It uh, uh, is, uh, I'll say after in 30 years of law practice, it was the most controversial case I think <laughs> I got involved in the city on, and I, I regret that it was that, uh, you know, <laughs> controversial. I think it, uh, uh, it did turn out to be uh, a nicer peer than I think a lot of people feared. Uh, I do think that uh, we need to... Uh, just ignore her. Sure. <laughs> we, we, we do need to uh, realize, too, that part of the reason the peer looks like it does is because uh, of the suggestions that were made by the people who opposed it. it, it the original plan for the pier was, was different in appearance uh, significantly than it is now. And uh, the pier that we have right now, you know, is uh, probably the, the least obtrusive pier you could build anywhere. And I, I think it uh, is a credit to some of the give and take and negotiation and fighting that went on that it resulted in a, uh, a Pier. Uh, some people said that we, uh, the DNR, butchered the pier because they they reduced the size of it uh, in terms of the height and the pilings and the benches. And um, but it uh, it it has turned out, uh, you know, to be a low profile that is not uh, obstructing. Uh, a lot of people have said they are surprised that it's uh, uh, that less people are using it than they expected. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a lot of use right now, and uh, some people said that it would uh, be better if there wasn't weeds there. Uh, it is a weedy section, and we've had this weed problem in the yeah, bay that really sure. developed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the beginning. And uh, uh, I've got a 10-year-old, and he's fished on it. And he, uh, he caught some fish, but he likes to fish down by, caught some uh, bluegill. and. Uh, but he said it was too weedy. He, he likes it down a little bit in front of Webster Stanley, where it's also <laughs> very weedy. <laughs> but uh, but it is uh, uh, there. Uh, it's uh, some people say it's uh, too narrow. Uh, there was an issue in the uh, case that uh, has kind of come to my attention, and uh, that it's not built as it was originally planned or ordered. It's it's supposed to have an eight foot wide. Uh, T on the end and the T is six feet and I'm, I'm trying to figure out why it was built different and uh, I, I, I haven't found that out and I, I don't know why. I'm hoping there's a reason but uh, the, all the plans were uh, uh, that it would be eight foot T on the end and one of the reasons cited was that that would make it easier for handicapped people to use it mm. with a wider uh, T but it's a six foot going out and it's a six foot T on the end whereas the original plan was an eight foot uh, T on the end, which it still looks looks good and it's still you know very nice. I, I went out there with a friend of mine who was in from out of town and, and we looked at it and he, last night and we could see the stars reflected on the water, you know, as we were standing on the pier. And, and so it's, it is a, uh, you know, a neat spot to go and observe the water, which is one of the things that uh, the judge said in the case, you know, it would be good for people to get out over the water and observe, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, uh, as well as fish off of. And uh, the fishing, uh, we'll see how it is in the spring. It was really built pretty much, uh, you know, after the spring fishing run, I think in May. It mm -hmm. started like May 3rd or something like that. Um, but uh, uh, I'm glad it's over and I hope the controversy <laughs> is over. I mean, the, it's funny, uh, you know, whether there'll be, you know, parking problems, we're worried about that, mm -hmm. whether there'll be uh, problems with no lighting, whether there'll be safety issues with uh, unlighted pier um, or security issues with it being unlighted. Uh, I was out there one night and two, uh, a couple from uh, homecoming with, uh, in their homecoming apparel were out going out on the pier to, you know, take a view, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> it's, uh, but I'm glad it's over and I, I, I hope it you know, works for the best. The, you know, the um, uh, we we had talked, Tina and I, uh, you know, about uh, other issues. You know, why this whole controversy developed in part because of the uh, 
the speed at which it was sure. submitted. Let me just, yeah. not to interrupt yeah. you, Chuck, but, but let, I, yeah, let me I'm, just, I'm uh, we, we, we can talk about that yeah. in a little bit, but, um, you know, I want to bring Tina into this. Sure. Um, you know, you were opposed to this uh, when it, uh, you know, was first brought up and uh, as it was kind of going through the court process and everything here. Now that it is in and the first summer has been completed, what's, what's your take on this? I mean, do you have well, similar views? Well, my whole problem with it was the process mm -hmm. in the first mm -hmm. place. Al although I do, I, I live in the neighborhood, I go by there a lot. Um, uh, um, the whole problem was the, um, I don't know the word to describe that, but uh, I just feel like if you um, look up good old boy action in the dictionary, <laughs> that that would be an example of it. Mm -hmm. Because that was like a two-day thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, the head of the Otter Street Fishing Club happens to be on the parks board. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no citizen input, mm -hmm. no oversight, and that was my, uh, I was very proud of Chuck for, um, for taking this on and donating so much time to it and coming from the heart. Uh, he and I actually both grew up in that neighborhood, and, um, mm -hmm. uh, and so it is important to me, but the important thing was that no one was asked about it. They just went ahead and did it. It did turn out to be. Uh, the first time I went to look to see how it was, I had a hard time seeing it. I had to look to see if it was actually there or not. But I go by there often now, and um, my granddaughter goes to a school near there, and um, I have only once seen anyone there. And it, um, the process is what I yeah. was angry about. That's what brought me into it. Yeah. it may Rightfully get used, so. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it may get used <coughs> much like all the other fishing piers in town. And, of um, which we have many, and many right we do. there. We do, <laughs> and um, you know, I, I've seen a number of them, um, and I don't really see a whole lot of people using any of them, really. I mean, on certain days maybe, but um, as a general rule, I don't see people, you know, <laughs> flocking to these fishing piers. I'm not sure the need that they, uh, you know, this handicapped and children's thing. Yeah, I'd like to talk about that because uh, uh, the guardrail on that pier is a two by four. Now, <coughs> if that was designed to facilitate safety for people with disabilities, there is no safety there. Not much. Um, so, what what happened to the the argument for the pier that would deal with safety and ac access for people with disabilities? Yeah, that's a good point. I know they they did build a uh, new here on the river by the Senior Center, which is a true uh, design I saw for ADA-approved handicapped piers, mm -hmm. and it's got you know railings and it is in much deeper water, uh, and uh, but it is uh, you know what they have in the ADA manuals yeah. for uh, disability, you know, and this one it is six feet going out, and it originally was going to be eight feet <laughs> on the end. And what happened to the other two feet on the end? I still trying to understand that but it would have been a little bit better on the end you know having eight feet it'd be a nicer pier just from a sure standing on it if mm -hmm. it's six feet wide versus eight feet wide but um, I don't know I hopefully they'll I don't know what the reason but but whether it's safe or not yeah was Wh who's liability let's say that there there's a group of disabled students that are brought out there for an afternoon of fishing or something and one of them their wheelchair goes off the pier because there's only a two by four guardrail. Who's liable? Is this city owned? It is city owned okay. now and the city has some, uh, you know, there's some state uh, so sovereign immunity, no. recreational immunity, you know, and it has to be, there's, they can be negligent, yeah. you know, and now whether this is negligent uh, for that design, I know uh, at the actual DNR hearing, which was a two-day hearing we had before a judge, the, uh, the, uh, Fishing club had a gentleman that worked for the DNR that was handicapped, and he <laughs> talked about that it was safer to cast and no obstructions around you with no pilings, and uh, and he, you know, how it was, I think he, you know, how it was wider, you know, but on the end to turn around with a wheelchair. But you know uh, how far the bathrooms are from there? Yeah, that's yeah, I mean, they're that's, far. Yeah. Another that's, main point that you people try. Right, to I mean that was yeah. kind of an urban planning decision, yeah. yes. and uh, I, you know, I. Yeah. I don't know what to say on the urban planning of it. it, it you know, we, we did have a witness, an urban planner, uh, Dr. Biardi, and he, he suggested that it was not uh, the best location, again, because of the lack of lighting and mm -hmm. parking and, and uh, restrooms. And, and uh, it is dark out there, too, I'll tell you, <laughs> at night. And uh, hopefully uh, 
it won't need lights because going out there at night you want to be able to see the stars it, you know it's so much light pollution in the city but mm -hmm. right along the park there you can see the Milky Way mm -hmm. and you can uh, you know see all sorts of stuff but if they start putting lights up there uh, it's a problem the, the judge's order uh, it's interesting uh, I did bring the decision he issued uh, judge uh, Bolt and he's a administrative law judge uh, uh, out of Madison and, and he he did put conditions on it uh, uh, one was it be built according to the plans, which <laughs> again had eight feet and not six feet. Uh, but uh, the other uh, was that it not uh, have lights, it not have uh, uh, structures on it. And uh, again, it was to keep the the natural, you know, uh, environment out there and try not to change that and that was kind of the trade-off you could have a maybe a safer pier but if you were going to put it right in that location uh, you had to respect the uh, the, the scenic uh, natural beauty and the views and try to you know uh, do that but uh, but it's uh, he also ordered that it be cleaned of any bird uh, uh, droppings uh, uh, there we just Established that there was need, there was potential for, mm -hmm. for uh, you know, probably illness, and uh, it's got to be cleaned <laughs> twice a month. And I, I, it, it has been pretty clean. I, I got to say, from what I've seen, and it may be the lack of pilings, that the less mm -hmm. seagulls perch mm -hmm. on the pilings and uh, and drop have droppings, because some of the other piers are just white, you know, and this one, uh, uh, you know, so maybe the lack of pilings helps in that mm -hmm. regard. But, but it is like a, you know, person walking out there, a steady. A lot of people like a piling they can grab onto, but well, certainly it's children do. <laughs> children yeah, do, yeah. or elderly, or yeah. you oh, know, me. Uh, and me too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're, it's kind of uh, like walking the plank out there. But it's it's you know it's six feet wide, which is is a decent mm -hmm. width. But uh, it it'd be nice, uh, you know, especially on the end if it was, uh, and it really turned you know it really is a nice low, mm -hmm. and it's about uh, two to five feet deep. From the shore mm -hmm. out to the, I guess the end is about a good five feet deep, you know. But hopefully nobody will uh, hit anything, you know, or, or fall off. Obviously, the the other thing is boating. Uh, they the, uh, the chances of a boat hitting it at night, unlighted, are probably pretty remote. But uh, snowmobile in the winter, I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, because it's low enough that. Uh, uh, it's no, you know, snow drifts. It could be right, you know, sure. mm -hmm. right, and uh, and that that was one argument we had too uh, that putting it in an unlighted location versus putting it down where there's more lighting and there was there is more lighting down where we were suggesting as an alternative. But but the judge, you know, agreed with that it was okay there and uh, that's where it's at and that's you know everybody I think is hoping that it'll you know won't have any of these dire. Mm -hmm you know, things, and hopefully it won't. I am unhappy, though, that after a two-year <coughs> battle, uh, that was a long, long, divisive mm -hmm. battle, mm -hmm. um, that after all of that, um, the city, uh, there's nothing to stop this from happening again, really. We do not have a gift acceptance policy, so that anybody can come along and say, we want to do this at this place, and, um, uh, and then f or do we f apparently feel obligated to then do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, gift acceptance policies are quite common. I mean, the museum has one mm -hmm. of its own. Um, I was librarian for 30 years, and we always in the school system had sure. one because people want to dump out their basements of books. And what we would say was that's kind of you, and you know we have standards and acquisition mm -hmm. policy, and that's what we'll. So we'll look it over and let you know. I I, I would like to see. It's not that big a deal. Uh, mm -hmm. Many cities have those, sure. and I would like to see that happen. I think I'm not sure about this, but I think the sundial, uh, which is also controversial. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that I don't or do like it. I'm just saying that I think that um, I think it was a gift. Yes, mm -hmm. I believe it was. And then when uh, Public Enemies was taking it up and down. Um, there was a little controversy a about it again, and then someone said, well, I offer to move it and put something else there as a gift. Mm. I thought, really? Uh, really, we're going to do it again? <laughs> 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 we're going to get another gift? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get another gift? It's not 
<laughs> no one wants to get underwear for Christmas, you know. And you, that's what happens. You go, oh, yes, thank you so much, you know. Um, I would like to have seen, after all of that effort and all of that divisiveness, yeah. I would like to have seen something come out of that. I mean, uh, uh, Brian Bain was on the Parks Board at that time, mm -hmm. was the yes. liaison, and he did say, you know, I wish we would have done it differently, and I, I, I see the problem. I mean, and I, well, we're sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't see that anything, now this is a different liaison, I don't see anything different. Mm -hmm. And I don't see how, I think someone brought up the idea, what if somebody wants to put like a pony ride up you know, there next to the pier, um, and it's yeah. a gift. It's coming for next year's well, sawdust. Well, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Which would make me so happy. Firstly, would make me so happy. Well, and, and, and having a, a gift acceptance policy would also, I think, take away some of the um, some of the argument that people made right. over the um, you know Terry Wooler from the Otter Street Fishing Club, and yet still sitting on the Parks Commission or Parks Advisory Board, whatever its name is. Um, you know, they felt that there was a conflict there and that he was kind of helping to sort of push this through. And, um, you know, the Parks Director wanted it on a fast track. Those were his words that he used. And, uh, you know, having a gift acceptance policy would take away from some of that argument anyway. Right, it sets um, up a policy that the people can be calmer about it, some oversight, mm -hmm. some slowing down then. Sure. Of, of the process. Well, and the other thing that we, we don't have two some years later um, is, you know, we, we don't have a formal policy, if you will, for the timeline when things come before advisory boards and commissions and then subsequently get in front of the city council. You know, in this particular case, it was in front of the parks board one day and Absolutely. 27, I think it was 26 Monday, hours Tuesday. later, yeah, it was, Monday, it was you know, on the council mm -hmm. agenda. And yeah. I, I know that, uh, you know, the parks director has said, well, you know, we'll, we'll make a concerted effort to work this through so that it doesn't happen again. Um, and they've probably tried, and I think they've done a fairly good job of doing that mm -hmm. with their scheduling. But, you know, Mr. Stefani won't always be there. And the same players won't always right. be part of the mix. And I think in order to have something, you know, consistent and something you know, that will always be handled the same way um, by the same people or their successors, you need to have something on the books. Yes, definitely. And, uh, and I don't think there is anything. So that's no, the problem, and well, exa except people saying, well, we won't let this happen again. But again, where, I have where talked are they to be council members about that, but, and they, uh, yeah. you know, as often with wards, and they say, well, we have a lot on our plate now. You know, that's something we... Yeah. Gift acceptance policy too. does not yeah. seem like a very big thing yeah, to do. I but mean right now. But I grant that it isn't a particularly <laughs> big thing to do. So no. so then, couldn't somebody do it then? Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and the thing is, just because it's not a big thing in comparison to everything else, it could yeah. bring up, it could be uh, the kind of the instigator for something like this in the future and look at what this cost. It would yeah, be nice to do it while there's no controversy, mm -hmm. while there's no gift yeah. pending. It would be nice to have something mm -hmm. calmly put together by uh, several people and then that is, um, goes on a model for some other city mm -hmm. rather than wait till some gift, yeah. some underwear comes up and then sure. you have to do it. <laughs> in, in about 15 seconds, Chuck, um, I know you said that it turned out to be better than what anyone expected and and uh, you kind of regret that it was quite the controversial, divisive thing that it was. But, um, you know, going into this, you didn't know no. how it would turn out. Do you have any regrets about your involvement in this? No. Okay. <laughs> That's don't. short I, and sweet. I, there I we go. But, <laughs> but I, uh, you know, I, I regret the, the hard feelings that mm -hmm. developed between, sure. uh, you know, and I, I mean, I... I like Terry Wohler, I do. <laughs> I like Tom okay. Stefani. <laughs> and it's some of these people, you know, and... and uh, Who don't you like know, you now? And, and don't, I don't think they like <laughs> me or not. I, I think they don't hate me, hopefully. But, but it's, you know, I mean, it was interesting. It was uh, challenging. We gotta, we gotta, so we got to go. Yeah. Right. We got to go. Yeah. So anyway, thanks very much thanks to both of you for being here. For coming. Yeah. And that's going to do it for us. We'll see you next time. Until then, take good care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh.